chance of USA, USA. <laughs> I think they're gonna start getting, you know, maybe a little bit, a little, little bit. bit louder. Yeah, Fourth of July. That would be next Saturday. But uh, across the country, I think a lot of people have Tuesday, June 30th, circled on their calendar. Yeah, there have actually been seven Women's World Cups. The U.S. has been to the semifinals in each of the last six. And all it would take to hit lucky number seven, a win over China in Canada. They met everyone on the A's and Royals roster actually saw time on the field. True. They were all active, for lack of a better term. <laughs> that actually almost makes that brawl seem somewhat neighborly. Neighborly. I do, I well, do. I guess it depends on the kind of relationship that you have with the people who live next oh. door. Uh, maybe it's a good thing that there was, you know, more time and space between the A's and the Royals than most actual. Well, this is Kelly O'Hara, and this is a glimpse, anyway, of the grit that it took for the U.S. national team to take down China. Uh, she wasn't the only one. Julie Foudy joins us, and she saw some team-wide improvements. She's going to share them with us coming up. The summer blockbuster season features escaped dinosaurs, aging terminators, and talking teddy bears. But the must-see event just might be the innings pitched by that guy right there, Washington's $210 million man, Max Scherzer, has been rather epic of late, allowing all of one hit in two starts. Friday, he had the Phillies and the chance to join Johnny Vandermeer as the only pitchers in Major League history to throw back-to-back no-hitters. Now, if you're wondering why you can't remember Vandermeer's feet, it's because he did it. 77 years ago. Are those lineup questions? But Julie Foudy, as we match here in our tones I of know, red and you orange guys knew today, I was missing like a team. <laughs> I got the memo. Thank you. <laughs> um, depth questions is something that there don't happen to be. Not with this particular U.S. team. You had a couple stars out of the lineup last night. What did you think about the adjustments that Team USA was able to make? Yeah, I thought they were good. Team that was playing a little more offensively. You saw the grit. Certainly from O'Hara. I mean, just the shots of blood, her, the blood and out. everything. I know you Beautiful. were tweeting about it after the fact. You were like, Cardinal Red, wear yeah. it with pride. W when you see the team able to make sort of some of those gains and get things moving, how significant is that as they go into a match here with the Germans? Significant because they've seen what they can do uh, offensively, but I think that's a huge confidence boost for the United States. All right, let me play devil's advocate for just a moment here because they did miss some chances in this yes. one, and they still only managed to put the ball in the in the goal one time. So how much of a level of concern is there, if any, for Jill Ellis moving forward? Well, I think she's really positive to talk about. <laughs> no and doubt I didn't about even it. Play 90 minutes. So I slept well. Lots of positivity, right? U.S. women now in the semis in seven straight World Cups. Julie Foudy uh, back with some other teammates of yours. Hopefully she's in her orange or red. Throughout the morning. Uh, we'll see how we all do in terms of matching stylistically <laughs> as well. <laughs> Sorry, I love it. And for more on this new crop of NBAers, let's welcome in our former front office executive, Bobby Marks. Now, I am in the camp who believes that anything short of the number one pick, Knicks fans were going to be up in arms. They were going to be booing. What do you think of their selection at four of Kristaps Porzingis? Well, I think what we saw Thursday night. Top plays we know J.J. Watt is no stranger to. First on defense, how about some touchdown passes? Well, now how about this, a sports center first. He is making top plays while skating on ice. I mean, what can't? this guy do right uh, stick around you got to see more you know it. Saunders is bridging the gap when he picked Kevin Garnett fifth overall in the 1995 draft the two Timberwolves top picks in the first round 20 years later they weren't even born yet now Carl Anthony Towns and Tyus Jones will have a mentor who has been in the league longer than they have been alive Brian Windhorst sat down with them. So back to baseball, and by now I'm sure you've seen the catch at Wrigley Field this week. Yeah. This is the one where the fan and new dad, Keith Hartley, balanced his seven-month-old son like, like this, <laughs> with the bottle in hand, all while stealing a fly ball from the Dodgers' Adrian Gonzalez. I don't know if I'm impressed or nervous. <laughs> the mom's face is the one who's amazing. Like, either she's going to smack him upside in the head later or, like, be amazed. I'm not sure how I would feel. Anyway, uh, that was hands down the best catch by a fan this week. Yes, it was. Uh, no babies in the vicinity of Josh Donaldson, thank goodness, uh, when he went after the foul ball on Wednesday. Then did his best Derek Jeter impression, if you will. Uh, the effort by the Blue Jays third baseman earned our Sports Science MLB Play of the Week honors brought to you by Smith & Forge Hard Cider.